Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I'm joined again by Matt and a shady guy over here, Jason. <laughs> How you doing, guys? <laughs> Good. We did this video just the other day, which will be linked down below. You literally yesterday, I think I published it about how I would hack you and uh, Cisco, you know, prompting us with an example here, but a good example. This is a fun little breakdown we want to go through for what happened at Cisco and how they did, which well, too long, didn't watch it, did a good job. But we're going to break down the attack vectors here and uh, still some lessons learned. And I, in one of the first ones is really, I got to jump to this right here, MFA fatigue. This is just clever where you annoy someone where it's come up and said, would you like to 2FA prompt so many times? They're like, the only way I can make this stop is to say yes. Or the action we, the user should have been trained to do is probably call someone and say like, this thing's broken. It's going crazy. Um, it's annoying me. Of course, I can picture my wife being a, a more general end user. If uh, I did that with her MFA system, she may just press yes, but I, I hope that's not true because she... <laughs> Works works should, at a bank. <laughs> so, should, well, and should the also, accounts be disabled if you press deny too many times, right? Like there, there's room for improvement there. If I hit no ten times, why is the eleventh one coming through? Well, yeah. and I would uh, probably say that the threat actors offset capabilities of changing IPs rapidly is not happening. So if they're hammering on the edge, it would be really cool to see technology where you could actually auto ban that from even hitting the surface yeah. for X period of time, yeah. right? So this IP yeah. they'd have to change. You'd force some trade craft, but yeah. Even if they are coming through to Tor, I mean, like in all honesty, okay, so maybe I force a denial of service attack, but I can only force a denial of service attack if I have your password and I can successfully prompt you for MFA. And in that case, is it really should service be denied? I would argue yes. Yeah, that's yeah. security before convenience for yeah. sure. I love it. Yeah, and and this is one of the things. The, the initial attack vector is technically low tech, and there's two things that allow them to gain access. One, this is a BOIOD system where people were logged into the browser to their personal Gmail with password synchronization, so it's synchronizing passwords in there, and so they were somehow able to leverage control over this personal computer, which then gave them the information needed to then swing over to logging into their business accounts that were synchronized with those passwords. Yeah. But they didn't have 2FA because 2FA will save us uh, until you're annoyed by the 2FA depressing it. So it's actually not the most sophisticated levels of attack. Um, it's still pretty low hanging fruit here. We were joking about this earlier when we started this little chat to lead to this video of people think it's a really complicated attack all the time. Like it's this really amazing cyber war of things and bits flying by. Nope, they just <clears throat> hammered the 2FA button a lot and then called them. Yeah. <laughs> and at this phase, right, so we have this initial vector. We understand where it's coming from. The only thing I'd say to Cisco's point is there clearly is a gap in their user awareness training and the understanding of how they should have reacted, what they should do around sensitive passwords and whether or not they should store them in their system. And, and I think a lot of executives, we check off the box because we've given the training, but I don't think that necessarily proves the training has been tested and is functional, <laughs> right? And I think some of those things you might add to this is personal computing reviews, things around password usage, testing of those things around this vishing attempts. Um, and so I would say the only piece I will go negative on for Cisco is just that piece that I yeah. think they maybe have a gap in their training aspect. And, and maybe this is something to be added to the training program. Who pick a person and annoy them with two FA requests yeah. and see yeah. what happens. It's that's yeah. actually a good idea. I'm gonna pick Matt Lee. Oh, that's yeah. very nice of you. I really appreciate it, shady yes. guy named Listness. <laughs> yep. Now from there, uh we're gonna just jump down. They did a lot of living off the land here. And yep. they did this to kind of evade detection. Way. We talk a lot about we're going to lock it down so they can't run approved apps and things like that. But this is something that's running on the system. Uh, let's talk about living off the land for a minute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the concept my dad always taught me of like, don't jump me in a rock pile because I'll, I'll probably pick up a rock. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the the yeah. reality of the situation. And so I think living off the land is, you know, much to everything. We have very open and trust first type centrism in most things. And once you're on that machine, there's a lot of tools and things I can abuse that, you know, you pointed to it yesterday, Microsoft will not fix list. Well, you know, walk the dog or dog walk that was just patched yesterday was known about for almost two years and was originally on their operating as behaved list. Uh, and now that it's been exploited and, and listed. So I think the point is living off the land lets a threat actor or an adversary understand that I don't have to bring tools that'll get me caught. I can use the things that are around me that I already have here, right? So yeah. I have an immediate question to ask. Was this user in question like a local administrator on whatever he was logging into in Citrix? Because a lot of these commands would just fail if they weren't, right? And yeah, so are you following best practices there? 
And that's why I think that's, uh, they had obviously, cause this person's just using a net local group administrator. Yeah. So they're adding themselves to an admin user named Z. So this yep. is a really interesting, so they're able to control a lot of high level privilege. This is why we, we talked about this in how I would hack you. You don't want the users to have too much privilege on a no. local workstation because the threat actor, if it assumes them, it assumes the same level of privilege. Yep. yep. And then they use Mimi cats, which cats, I yeah. think. One of the things that we'll speak towards as we go, you know, Cisco very much touts at how quickly they stopped it. Jason, you said as we started today, you know, and I saw the same stat, 2.8 gigs was all that was exfiltrated. Yeah. And so when you look yeah. at it, I have to imagine the command about four commands ago was what t triggered their incident response team. That would yes. be my supposition, yeah. right? When you got into that uh, bringing down mini, mini dump uh, and being able to execute that uh, is probably going to trigger most effective. Yeah. Uh, and I think this probably alerted to them. And being that they're Cisco, they have some really advanced. The Talos people are no joke. They really good at what they do. Um, they probably wanted to go. We know we want to watch what they're doing a little bit. It's. I think there's probably a little bit of that that went on because they want to dig deeper. Who's attacking us? Um, yeah. is what's the threat actor team? group? Yeah. yeah, what's the threat actor group? Because uh, they do attribution and things like that. So they dove a lot in this. And I think this is where um, they probably let them go a little further. They did have some redacted uh, things here, but they posted like, this is just the beginning of more to come. You know, them uh, sending hyping. Hyping yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Wait, uh, the more to come. Like, there's literally nothing. Oh, oh, oh no! They stole, they stole any connect mobility client. I can't get that from any .edu domain ever. <laughs> right. So. Look at the juicy bits of name oh. titles we made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's. I, I think they probably, in a very controlled way, watch them because they actually go down and list. They have all their like, commands. They all the commands. They knew everything yeah. they were doing. Uh, they also. Uh, Break it down here. Let's see. Go down. They have the whole uh, meta attack mapping in here, so they yep. really did a nice job of laying this out. But this probably took a little more time. They have the hashes and the IP address used for talking to the C2 server. So I, so I think they probably took some time to let these people, they wanted to gather intel at this point. And they may have known the fences on the sensitivity of data and had egression control at that point. I mean, it became a honeypot to some extent. Yeah, I was going to say, if they maybe the user did report it and they turned the user's account into a honeypot, right? That yeah, 100%. That, that would be That would be next level awesome. Yeah. The one thing I will say, you know, when we talk about cybersecurity, for anybody who's still listening to me mm -hmm. drone on, um, when we talk about cybersecurity, we think about it as identify our assets and our systems that are touching them, right? Uh, protect, put out the systems. But most marketing focuses on protect. It's all about we're going to be the best. We're going to stop it all. No bad thing will ever happen to you. Then why right. the hell is there three fifths of it after that? Because you have detect, which is figure out the boom, right of boom being, you know, res respond. How do I stop it? How do I honeypot this account, you know, to, to a shady guy's point down there, right? And then how do I then recover? And I think I postulate more value is gained in Cisco's response, right, than the failures in the front end and the weaknesses, because they'll all weep speed there. Um, so anyways, I'll get off my soapbox, but that's the takeaway I would say. No, for me. And it is. And, and right here's kind of in Cisco's response. You know, they observe the TTPs. They are looking at exploits. They created two Clam AV signatures of it. So Cisco's like, you know, merely putting this information back out there. That's what kind of leads me to think they, once they seen and it triggered on their side internally, they let it <clears throat> kind of like you said, turn a user into a honeypot. So we understand the full scope of what this threat actor is capable of. They even commented, and I like this, this proves they have a lot of detail in the logging. They said, we noticed typos, so we know these were manually done. They, like, we typoed something here, typoed something there. So this was a, a threat actor being very careful and methodical, yeah. not just running. They may have a playbook, but it wasn't a script they were running on here. They were, you know, yeah. you typo a few things occasionally. I know I do that. Well, so. if I recall, the three the three attributions that are being floated around are all somewhat uh, intelligence affiliated in some yes. form. And so stealing intellectual property from a Cisco user as a very targeted human at a keyboard is not all that unexpected in my mind so yeah and i think a few oh. takeaways from this are really simple um 502 user and user training are two just low-hanging fruits simple as that uh don't let people use the same personal devices they log into their personal gmail and their work one that is just you know even my work from home employees they have completely separate workstations for this reason yep. um because yep. i just don't it, it the risk isn't there you got to create those separations all those yep. yeah the any the fido two keys and yubikey being one of the most popular ones on the market but there are others out there uh and even the yubikey ones are relatively affordable they're just so simple to do and if you really dig into i have a video i broke down on how like ssh works with fido two and things like that you look at some of the details you're like oh that's just clever and that's yes you think about how hard yeah, cool. that is to get in the middle of
I wish yeah. we had more support for it in like the common tool sets we use, especially as MSPs as an MSP. Like nothing I use supports it other than like GitHub and like yeah. Uh, the but you can stuff. but yeah. you can bring it in as a method of part of your MFA structure, yeah. so that as you do SSO and as you do extensibility of these tokens in different places, it works. And I'll, I'll give it the five second ELI five on these. Essentially, the difference is with my cell phone, it's on the publicly switched telephone network. It can be mm -hmm. stolen in many ways. It can be stolen on signaling system seven from a text message perspective, right? There's tons of things that can be done to attack that side. This is literally the eye of the beholder. There's only, I think, one side channel attack against these. I think it's against the Google token, uh, if I recall. Yeah, the Titan they token. They found yeah. a side the Titan channel token. attack. Yeah, but that's the only one. And they had to have it and pry it out of my hands and take this plastic piece apart. And yeah. Even if you get my PIN number, that PIN is only to this. It has no transportability to anything else public facing. So FIDO2 ELI5 is yeah. it is a cryptographic way of saying I'm me that's not reachable by the outside world, only by my fingers. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. Saves you a lot of the 2FA. That's a good one. And uh locking down PowerShell usage, making sure people aren't local administrators. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. And obviously yeah. having a high level of monitoring like Cisco does well, to be alerted to this. So yeah. You can jump on it. A, a huge thing there, right? It's like clearly they had like Sysmon running on these boxes because they were able to get everything that people did. And a lot of people don't do that, right? So once you have an incident, you're playing like Schrodinger's like breach. Like what did they do once they were in? Right. Uh, because you don't have any visibility and uh into what was actually run yeah they knew i mean they didn't just know the commands type they knew the typos yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 100 yeah, the Think enter didn't that. work go again please <laughs> right yeah absolutely <laughs> uh and the final further reading i'll leave people with is going to be the dark Knight diaries episode 36 with tinkersack which is called jeremy for marketing great one because it's a fun listen because it's storytelling it's a red team engagement and it's basically a red teamer walking through everything they did with the you know obviously targeted adversary like cisco was and what happened next and it's just a fun i won't spoil the ending for you but uh it walks through almost this scenario of living off the land using powershell these are these same type of techniques were used in that particular episode uh so i always like to give people something to listen to something for the reading and uh, that one's fun also follow tinkersec on twitter he's uh he's fun <laughs> cool so, all right, I'll leave links to where you can find more information about the shady guy and Matt. And of course, our other video of how I would hack you. Uh, that's been a lot of fun. All links are down below. And thanks. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the hire us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.